Here's an ICO model 950B resistance capacitance comparator bridge and the main use for this instrument is for checking capacitors. It can also uh, check resistors and inductors. These units were made for several years. In fact this unit was made in 1963 according to some date codes I found. The nice thing about these older capacitor testers is is they will test a capacitor at, at higher voltages. In tube type electronics it's not uncommon to find capacitors rated at 400 to 600 working volts and this tester will provide up to 500 volts to test those capacitors. When checking a capacitor with a modern capacitor meter such as this, the amount of voltage applied across the capacitor is very small. Therefore, a capacitor might actually check OK, but when that same capacitor is operated in circuit where several hundred volts is placed on it, then the capacitor might exhibit leakage and that's where this tester comes in. But like any other vintage piece of electronic equipment this tester is going to need a need an overhaul before it can be expected to be accurate and reliable. I've already verified that it does operate somewhat correctly and the eye tube is still nice and bright so no problems there cosmetic condition is nice. Only thing really wrong is this panel, this front panel has a protective film over it that I believe was supposed to have been removed when the tester was new. Well whoever had it didn't do that and now the film is all turned yellow and nasty looking. Got to figure out a way to get this off but anyway we'll now open this up and start the repair process. I always want my test equipment to be in top-notch shape and reliable. Nothing's more frustrating than to be repairing a piece of equipment and then your test equipment crap out on you. Okay, here we are with the case removed and as you can see there's some old style capacitors in there that need to go. There's the underside of the chassis. Now there are three capacitors in here that are worth mentioning. There is a 200 picofarad capacitor, a 0 0.02 microfarad capacitor, and a 2 microfarad capacitor that are in the bridge circuit. And these are all, all three of those are precision capacitors, which means I need to replace them with something with a very close tolerance like one to two percent in order to help ensure the accuracy of this piece of test equipment and there's also some one percent resistors that will need to be checked but more on that later most all the other caps can be replaced with what, what I have in stock so I'll get started on that and I'll go ahead and order the precision caps that are needed and there's one other thing I want to show you regarding capacitors, but that can wait for a minute or two. Right now we'll get started replacing the standard value capacitors that this tester uses. Okay, we have most all of the capacitors replaced, except for the precision capacitors that I mentioned earlier. That would be this big joker here and these two capacitors under here. Here's the underside of the chassis. Now here's one capacitor that's going to be a slight problema. This one electrolytic capacitor is an 8 microfarad rated at 525 working volts. That's right, 525 working volts. Now I can tell you without even looking in my junk box that the highest value I have is going to be rated at 450 working volts which will not work. And honestly electrolytic capacitors above 450 volts in today's world are 
hard to find and they're expensive when they do turn up. However, I'm not going to let this slight problema hold us back here. Allow me to demonstrate. Okay, and here's how we get around that capacitor problem. We simply wire two 22 microfarad capacitors rated at 450 volts in series with one another. You just hook the positive of one capacitor to the negative of the, of the other capacitor, since these are electrolytics. And what this does, when you wire capacitors in series, the working voltage doubles. So since these are 450 volt caps, we now have a 900 working volt capacitor, which is ample enough. And our capacitance value is cut in half. So since each cap is a 22 microfarad, we now have an 11 microfarad cap, as I'll demonstrate on the capacitance meter. Okay, actually it reads 10.13 microfarad. Checking each capacitor individually, this capacitor is 20.4 microfarad, and the other one is, bear with me just a second, 21.1 microfarad. So yep, that would give you your 10 microfarad reading. So that's close enough to 8 microfarad to work satisfactorily. Okay, way back several years ago when I was taking electronics, they taught us this little trick about wiring capacitors in series, but they advised us not to do it unless we just had to, because if one capacitor starts to fail, it could place undue stress on the other capacitor and cause it to fail or else explode and we certainly don't want that to happen. So I think the way I'm going to minimize that is to wire a 470k ohm resistor across each capacitor and actually I read about the resistors from an article on the internet someone else who restored one of these ICO capacitor testers just like what I have and it does make perfect sense to use the resistors, so that's that's what we're going to go with. Okay, here we are with all the capacitors replaced, except for those precision capacitors, which I still need to order. We're connected to a current production .047 microfarad cap, and we'll rotate this knob until we see maximum eye opening. There we go. And to check for leakage, we just rotate this knob over to where it says paper and mica test. And we'll ro rotate our voltage. And this eye should close briefly and then jump back open for a good capacitor. I'm rotating the voltage control up towards 500. So as far as I'm concerned, this capacitor is good. Now, of course, you don't want to touch those leads while you're making this test. You might get zapped. I'm going to turn it all the way back to zero. Okay, we're now connected to an old .05 microfarad cap, and as you can see, the eye is just barely open. So let's check it for leakage. Rotating our voltage control. Whoa! The eye closes and does not open, so that capacitor is very, very leaky. As you can see, it opens up just a little bit the longer you leave it connected, so... Yeah, that capacitor is very, very leaky. Okay, we're about out of time, so I'll do another video once I get those precision capacitors in to complete this. And I'll do a more in-depth presentation on how to test old capacitors. Okay, thanks for watching. More to come.